I got a package from Amazon today, so we're just gonna open it up and just gonna see what's inside. Because you you don't you you obviously don't know what's inside. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a, a big surprise. Don't worry. Okay, so this is not easy to do with one hand, so I need some assistance here and. This and this and um gonna worry about that later. Uh so yeah. I got two Lego Overwatch sets and well firstly I'm gonna open them up open them up and then I'm gonna build them and I'll be back with you in a few days. Okay, I'm back guys. So first we have the Tracer and Widowmaker set, which actually is a pretty decent build over here, um, this is just one of the, this is the payload, or the escort or whatever for Watchpoint Gibraltar, and actually what I really like about this set is that, right there, actually balances perfectly on a hard surface, um, let's spin it around, and it's, it's still up, see, it's, it just balances perfectly. And uh, you've got the... I think there's one of the checkpoints at the very end. Uh, this is where you have to escort the payload to. You have a nice Widowmaker figure. Uh, there's a really nicely built sniper gun here. Um, I don't know why a lot of the Overwatch guns are built. Some people say it's to make them more blocky, so they're more family friendly. Uh, but they created their own molds for... Star Wars guns, there's a, like a pistol gun already in LEGO, so my guess is that because Overwatch is a first person shooter, they want the guns to be a lot more, I guess, identifiable and unique. I, I, I doubt it's a family friendly thing. These guns aren't even realistic guns, like, this is a more futuristic sniper rifle. Uh, Tracer's guns are not realistic at all in the game. And yeah, so yeah, there's the tracer figure. She has um this backpack piece thing, so you can attach the the her time warp thing effect. Uh, but it's really just for that because there is print on the back, so it would look better without the backpack piece. And next we have Reinhardt and Diva, which. So this is a pretty good set, um, yeah, Reinhardt is actually a minifigure as well inside here. So even though he, it doesn't really make sense for him to be a minifigure, you, you have a minifigure version of Reinhardt, and his hammer is held by a clip, and these clips are on both hands, so you can hold the hammer in both hands. At the bottom of the hammer right here, that's not very accurate, and there's a reason for that. It's actually meant to be... It's meant to be a hammer for the minifigure of Reinhardt, and... Uh, that's pretty pretty epic, in my opinion. Uh, I hate having one hand. Okay. Uh, but the biggest problem I have with this is that his shield... He didn't come with a shield, and... That's a big problem when the only thing your character does is walk around with a shield. You want to have a shield with a character who walks around with a shield. Uh, but yeah. Next, oh shoot. Okay. Next we got Diva, who doesn't balance too well, honestly. She falls over quite easily. Uh, but that's not really the fault of the LEGO designers. That's kind of just how the mech is in real life. Like, they're, they're trying to implement a an unbalanced mech into the real world. So, yeah, I can kind of see how that where that happened, like why that happens. Yeah, Diva has a lot of stickers on her, and I would be mostly fine with that. But this um, bunny face print on the top, it's it's not good as a sticker because you're trying to stick it on a circular object. It's really hard to align it, so I got it pretty wonky. Uh, yeah, so that will forever haunt me. So let's get to the real topic of this video. Why Overwatch? Why did LEGO decide to make a LEGO Overwatch? Because 
I don't think Overwatch makes good LEGO sets. Overwatch is a game driven by characters and the players. So the only thing that you would really want to build is the characters. That's why the Reinhardt and D.Va set is really good because Reinhardt is the character that you're building. D.Va, while you're not building her, her, you're building her mech, she plays in that mech in the game. In the Tracer vs Widowmaker set, while I got it for the, the minifigures, I really don't care about the payload. In the end it just kind of looks like a generic mini shuttle. It's not a shuttle, it's a drone, I know that, but that's really kind of what it looks like. Now, th this doesn't mean that video game based LEGO sets are bad. I think LEGO Minecraft is a really good example. I haven't bought any LEGO Minecraft sets, but looking at them online, they look pretty good. Like, Minecraft is a game based on your interactions with the world. So when designing the Minecraft sets, firstly, they have to design a world because that's what Minecraft is based around. That's the most important thing about Minecraft. Secondly, there's personalization. You can move bricks around. Some sets can be rearranged in different ways, and that's really cool. That captures the spirit of Minecraft. And Overwatch is a shooting game. It's a first-person shooter. You shoot at people. So what I really do like is that you have buildable guns, so they all look unique. But that's it, really. There's also the Bastion set, which I don't have, but I want to get. And that's all. I want the D.Va and Reinhardt set, and I want the Bastion set. That's it. And the only reason why I got the Tracer vs. Widowmaker set is because I wanted the characters. And I'm not saying I don't want the other characters. I do want the characters in Hanzo vs. Genji. I want the characters in the Dorado Showdown. And I want the characters in Watchpoint Gibraltar. But... I feel like I'm going to be paying too much for the actual environmental builds, which I don't want. I don't want this generic Japanese dojo where the only thing it can do is shoot out these discs of the dragons that Hanzo and Genji can control. Honestly, if they actually built a set where you had two dragons in that motion that Hanzo shoots them out in the game, and there was like a function to spin those around, yeah, I'd probably actually buy that, but I don't want the dojo, that doesn't mean anything. Now, sure, it is an actual map in the game, but like I said, it's generic. This is a, just a, a regular Japanese dojo, and the Dorado Showdown is some generic Mexican street, and Watchpoint Gibraltar is just a space shuttle. That's it. Sure, the space shuttle is a little more unique because it's an Overwatch space shuttle, but... All you can really do is put a character inside, and that's really it. You know why? Because Overwatch is a player and character-driven game. There is no interaction with the environment. The most you'll be doing with the environment is paying attention to the layout to get, you know, an advantage against the other team, or if you know that a certain area gives you a disadvantage with a certain character, then you will try to keep away from that area. That's all you really do with the environment. And so I'm not really interested in buying sets to build the environments. All I care about is the characters. And like I said, going back to LEGO Minecraft, Minecraft is a very environmentally focused game. It, it's based on how you interact with the world and how you change it. So having sets where you can rearrange bricks, where you can get a torch to light up or rearrange the, the minecart system, it's really cool. The Mountain Cave is a really good example of a good Minecraft set. You can rearrange the tracks, you can rearrange some bricks, you can move the house to another area. There are parts of the sets where you can just kind of press a button and it'll break to simulate TNT exploding. And in Minecraft you can also customize your character. You can use different skins, you can put on different types of armors, give them different sets of tools, which also encourages you to change the minifigures around rather than keep it the same. Also you can put mini slimes into a big slime and then when you break the big slime it turns into mini slime. That's that's a really cool feature. I like that a lot. But yeah, just saying, there's so much you can do with LEGO Minecraft set compared to LEGO Overwatch. And like I said again, Overwatch is a game about shooting. There's no environmental interaction, so there's not really much you can do with the sets. And because the sets are very heavily based on real world things like a launch pad, or a Mexican street, or that Japanese dojo, it's really kind of bland. Unlike something like Star Wars, 
where you have all these really unique ships and unique land vehicles, unique buildings, unique equipment. But I still like Overwatch, so I'm kind of glad they did it. So I do have, you know, a Reinhardt, a D.Va, Widowmaker, and Tracer. Those are really cool figures to have. But the only other set I'll really be buying is Bastion, which, might I add, has a transforming feature, which also adds to the value of the set. If it was just Bastion without the transformation function, I actually probably wouldn't have bought it, because Bastion is also a big set. Like, he's not minifigure scaled. Now, D.Va and Reinhardt are pretty big, but that's just because of limitations. Because there is a limited edition Omnic Bastion that you can buy, and that's about minifigure size. But even then, I'm kind of iffy about Bastion, because it really only comes with Bastion, and that's it, and he's pretty big. So it's not like I can put him together with all the other sets. He's just kind of a display piece. And it's a shame they kind of did go for Overwatch. I think there are a lot of other video game franchises that will work really well with LEGO. Just in general, video games are about interaction. So if you find the right video game and turn it into a physical toy, you can make something really great out of it. Now because Sonic is my favorite video game franchise, I would have to say that I would really love Sonic to be a LEGO set. Someone has made a Sonic Mania set on LEGO Ideas. And if you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website that LEGO put up and you can basically submit your own set and if it gets enough support, LEGO will consider making it. Now a LEGO Legend of Zelda would be pretty cool, but I don't think LEGO could be able to make it because Nintendo would probably not give them the rights to it. But there is already a LEGO Sonic set. So I think there's a pretty good chance that Sega might lend the rights to LEGO for a bit. And if this LEGO idea set gets enough supporters, LEGO will probably look through it and probably, you know, get permission from Sega and all that. And if they say yes, that could be a pretty good set. Now, as of recording this, this set is four tenths of the way to getting enough supporters. I think you need 10,000 supporters. It's got a little over 4,000 supporters. Like I said, this is a set based on Sonic Mania. So it's got classic Sonic with shorter legs, uh, it's got the Death Egg Robot in Green Hill Zone, <laughs> Green Hill Zone, but it's a pretty good set overall. Firstly, Sonic is a video game, like the classic games are just a bunch of items just dropped around a map, so a cool thing you can do is you can disconnect parts of the set and rearrange them to your liking. Now like I said, if you find the right video game, you can make a good Lego set and you can add a lot of play features to it. And Sonic has some elements to it where you can interact with the environment. You can jump on springs and you can do that in the set. You can put Sonic on a spring, you can press a button which will launch him up, which is pretty nice. The Death Egg Robot also has the ability to spin his claw hand things, and also extend them out just like in the game. The creator also added this cool collapsing cliff feature, which again is taken out of the games because some cliffs actually collapse when Sonic runs on them. And unlike Overwatch, Sonic's environments are a lot more iconic. Green Hill has a pretty iconic design, it's not just a generic Green Hill. Even if the set didn't have any fun play features, you know, it'd be a nice display piece because it just looks nice. Sonic in general would make pretty good sets, especially when Eggman has a bunch of creations, a bunch of robots that he's built, and you can replicate them into LEGO. The biggest issue with making a LEGO Sonic is his reputation. He doesn't have a very good reputation, which might affect the sales. But hey, they risked making a LEGO Sonic pack for LEGO Dimension, so we can at least get a one-off set. So guys, if you haven't already, I'd actually really like you to go support that LEGO Sonic set that I was talking about. Just go on to LEGO Ideas, make an account, and just press the support button, that's all it takes. Even if you don't really want a Sonic set, you won't buy it. Just support it anyways for the people who will buy the set. Anyways guys, I'll be leaving a link for that in the description below. And if you like this video, leave a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. And if you wanna interact with me directly, check out my Twitter or join my Discord. But yeah, like at the end of every video, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.